Now you can hang curtains from just a plain tray, but to really make a statement and create more interest in a window space, why don't you consider using a curtain pole? They come in all different designs, from traditional wood and wrought iron to more modern chrome and stainless steel. Or you could go for these more ornate swirly finials, or these crystalline pieces. Whatever you choose, the principles for putting up a curtain pole are exactly the same. It can be a really easy job putting a curtain pole up, but just make sure you get everything level and a good fix into the wall. Curtains hang from the curtain pole, which is in turn connected to the wall by two or more brackets. The ornamental ends or finials on the poles are held on by small screws called grub screws. The curtains hang from the pole either by eyelets on the curtain itself or loops attached to the curtain. The length of the curtain is known as the drop and it can be just the size of the window or right down to the floor. When the curtain is drawn, the mass of material that forms is known as the gather. Window sizes and shapes vary enormously, so this is a general guide to putting up a curtain pole for you to adapt for your particular home. Before we get the toolbox out, let's talk about your choice of curtain. Now if you're going to use a big heavy curtain like this, you need to allow for some extra space at the side of the window for all this material to gather. You may also need to use a longer curtain pole. And don't forget if you're putting extra back ends in to take into consideration the weight and thickness of them. Don't forget as well, you may need to use a longer screw and raw plug just to get a better fixing to take all that weight. OK, should we measure up? Aim to position your pole so that the curtain hangs as you prefer it, which might be above the floor or at the bottom of the window. So take this into account when calculating the height of the pole and the length of the drop. And remember to factor in whether the curtain hangs from eyelets, rings or loops of fabric. The end brackets should be at least 50mm along from the side of the recesses, probably more if you have thick curtains, and at least 50mm up from the top edge. Use step ladders high enough to allow you to wear comfortably and safely without reaching. That's right, don't try doing this balancing on a chair. Now we're going to be hanging quite a heavy curtain and this is a large window so we need to put a central bracket up and to find where our centre point is we're actually going to need to measure the entire length of the window. Our window is 740mm wide which means halfway across the window is 370mm. So we just mark the bottom edge of the window and then we need to give the measurement of our curtain drop, which is 2,040 millimetres. So taking the tape right down to the floor, and using our centre mark as a guide, we need to find 2,040 millimetres, which is just there. Now once we've got our centre mark, we just need to make sure everything's level. So using that centre mark as a guide, take a level, making sure our bubble's in the centre of our level, we can actually put a mark and it X marks the spot. Now before we actually drill our hole, we need to make sure that there's no cables or pipe work in the area that we're going to drill. Now these detectors are really useful. You can buy these in store and they locate stud work, pipe work and electrical cables. So running this over the surface just where we're going to drill, if there are any hazards, the detector will speed up its clicks. Bear in mind that it may detect the steel lintels sometimes used in modern buildings. If you are in any doubt about the results, contact a professional. This location though is clear. Now if you're drilling into a tough material like concrete, it's an idea to drill a pilot hole first. Now this acts as a guide for the less controllable larger drill bit. And before you use any power tools, it's really important to pop on your dust mask and to put on your safety specs. And once we've got our hole, we just need to pop our raw plug in there, like so. 
Now we just need to pop our screw in. Don't screw the screw all the way home because we need to just leave enough space to hook our bracket onto. This bracket requires a second screw to hold it firm. But don't over tighten it as it could crack the plaster. Now once we've got our centre bracket up, we actually need to repeat the same process to the right hand side of the window. But just to double check and make sure we've got our measurements right, we're going to measure the curtains just to check the gather on the curtain. When working up the measurements of how much gather to leave at the ends of the pole, bunch the curtain up, leaving out the end one, because this one sits on the ends of the bracket, anchoring the curtain in place. And then just measure the top. This one's roughly 100 mil. We now know that our curtain gathers 100 millimetres. So from the outside of the reveal, we take our tape measure and we mark 100 millimetres. And then we're going to take our level, making sure our bubble's in the middle of our level, and take a pencil line at the top just here. And then again, taking our level, but this time using the centre bracket that we've just put up as a guide and using the bracket that we intend to fix here. Again, we make sure our bubble's in the middle of the level and we can mark. Attach this bracket in exactly the same way as the first. There. Now that's in, it's just a case of repeating the same process on the other side. All we need to do now is feed the pole through the curtain and then lift in position, making sure that you leave the end eyelet on the outside of the bracket. Top tip, before securing your pole into place, make sure that the grub screw on the finial is hidden. Once you've got that one up, you just repeat the same process for the other side. There we go, it's as easy as that. You can also get matching tie backs that attach to the wall for that extra touch of style. Now here's a top energy saving tip. During the winter time when you've got your heating on and at night when you've got your curtains drawn, try tucking them in behind the radiator or resting them on the sill. That way you keep more heat in the room. For more ideas and know-how, check out more of our films or go to DIY.com or pop in store.